three, two, one. Welcome to the Northport, Mary. Hello, August. Hello. How are Hello. you today? Very well, you? Very good, thank you. Uh, we had a post podcast earlier, uh, and a lot of people heard it and uh, had some comments and really liked it. And we went a bit deep. Uh, for uh, for people um, who don't know you, you are uh, giving your life to yoga. Mm-hmm. That's the right way to say it. It's a, it's an important part of my life. Yeah, yeah. Quite big, I think. It's quite big. It's forming my habits and my living. Um, but I wouldn't narrow it down to yoga either. No. 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 Because there are many things that I'm also influenced by. But yeah. yoga has been the major influence in the last ten or so years, but I wouldn't put that's the only thing, really. Is yoga uh, a more or less a, like a vehicle for you to to open up to to the? Yeah, it's a vehicle that also feeds me. Yeah, <laughs> you know, as my work um, in that way. Yeah, it is major. Um, but there's once you get into yoga, you you tend to get into science, you tend to get into philosophy and many things that I was not not aware of before. I'm now able to having to understand, and so the field gets bigger. The field gets bigger mm. through yoga, but it's not only yoga. It's uh, interesting you you uh, mentioning uh, philosophy. Uh, I hear a lot of different things on YouTube, uh, as uh, most of the people do. But I was thinking about, you know, we always talk about the big philosoph, the, the people who had like the grand talk and, and the understand stuff. But where is today's philosoph? Because today, if you're a philosoph, if you're thinking some grand new talk, then you're like a crazy person or you're a conspiracy theory mm. and, and then academia or, or the science is just attacking you if you're trying to see a, 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 a thing in a different way. Mm. Let's be crazy because in in, um, in the libraries, the old philosophers mm. are kings, you know, and we listen to them. But when people now today start to think a little bit outside the box we're living in, then you shown the way in a way. Hmm. Maybe I'm not right. It's just what I feel. I think uh, throughout time we will always need the philosophers. We will need the artists. We will need the shamans. We will need the fortune tellers. We will need the scientists. I think as we evolve <coughs> in humanity, we will use those tools always, uh, whether it is looked down upon or not. Our collective consciousness needs that input. Hmm. I am, you know, I am and therefore, you know, I think and therefore I am hmm. was the beginning of philosophy. These days in our generation, we use the term I feel and therefore I am. Yeah. So we change, but the fundamentals remain the same. And I think it should ultimately bring us to a synthesized point, a similar point, whether it's the feeling or the thinking, if they can union, which is yoga, um, I believe that we have room still for philosophy. Mm. But in that way, nothing is original anymore. You know, you kind of sort of, um, you know, we've been we've been using similar same standpoints of thought for so long. Perhaps we need philosophers, you know, philosophers to break through that a bit. But then Einstein said, <laughs> "It is harder to break a judgment more so than to break an atom." Yeah. <laughs> so, freeing the minds, perhaps. I think think the job of uh, of the philosoph is um, if I if I take myself and other people in general. Uh, we have uh, we have um, we have news. We have politicians. We have laws. We have rules. Uh, a lot of lots of thing is like gather around me, and and I have to um, adjust to all those. But sometimes you can change a little bit on this, change a little bit on this, and you don't see the greater pictures. So sometimes the, the philosoph is just have a broader vision on it and said together 
Så 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 one one uh, person said this the only thing we don't learn from the history is the history. So if it's a war where we are spending all our time to to um, understand why the war is there, why this start because this this and all the details and nobody is talking about the horrific of the war. That's the reason we should focus. And I think the philosophy is like gathering all the society and then like a, like an eagle eye flying over and say, okay, I know that you mean good about this, you mean good about this, but in the end, this is the cookie you have, you know. And let's remember the philosophy was the basis of science. If it wasn't for those big, big questions of the philosophers, we would not have science today. <coughs> Who am I? Where do I come from? Where am I going? And what is this? And why is this? These were the fundamental questions that began the science. In fact, in the ancient Greek, the philosophers were considered as a very highly um, important piece of the you know society for evolution of their time. Mm. It wasn't necessarily, oh, you know, they are just thinkers. No, they actually formed the basis of medicine. Hippocrates was a philosopher to begin yeah. with and um, we need it for sure for sure it's important mm. but <coughs> I just every time I, I see something or hear something uh, and smart people talk they always talk about the philosophers from 1800 and 19, it's a long time ago but mm. we have a lot of people who are providing us with very very good information and good sets to think and ways are going to open our eyes. Mm -hmm. But I think many people now starting to open their eyes and ears and actually listen to to today's philosopher because there's a lot of good people out there with a good, good foundation, with good uh, energy and good information. And that's a a big change in the world now because now you're actually starting dipping in and listening and start thinking about it. Mm-hmm. Because today's philosophy is not the same as 18... Some of it is yeah. the same, for sure, but, but the world have changed. So the philosopher have also have to change. The way the young people are thinking these days are very unique, actually. It really challenges our <laughs> conceptions. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I really like the new thought of the new generation. Um, they don't buy into things like we needed to. They do question. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> they don't buy into what is given to them, and that is philosophy to to actually, you know, question. But to ask the right questions has always been the focus of philosophy, not just to ask a question. Yeah. We should have questions, but they should be right in the way that they should be structured right. If we ask the right question, we get a better answer. But if we ask the wrong question, we get stagnant in the in the wrong direction and. Philosophy teaches us to ask the right question. I think that was the purpose of it. And about right. asking the right questions, it's uh, it's a lot about asking your questions yourself first. Yeah. Why do I ask you that question? What's the reason mm. I want to know it? And if that's a good yeah. reason, it's a good question. Yeah. But sometimes you have to back up and say, why do I question her? Do I question her just to to make her stand in a bad light or Mm. I want to pull her down? Or do I actually ask her something because I want to learn something new and and be in peace of the world? And that's kind of defining a good or a bad question, I think. Recently I heard, what's his name? Is it here, David here? Um, A good question a good question always opens doors. Mm. A bad question just closes the door. That's it. And it's so true. That's very true. So the questions that open doors to new possibilities and new ways of thinking are the right questions. But the close, the ones that shut the door with a final answer, mm. we begin a story with a question and we end it with the answer. So, mm. the, so the question is, <laughs> do we want the story to end? Mm. Do we want a conclusion? Or do we want to ask new questions to see many possibilities? Mm-hmm. Um, but so, I think it's, it's a lot about um, ego, because uh, I think most of us, sh- certainly me, ha- have, uh, have a big ego. 
and I have to struggle to keep that down. But if we're gonna have a good conversation today, and I'm gonna ask some good question for you, <laughs> if if I leave my ego out, because if my ego, if I give that um, uh, open road, that's ego want to put you down and make me come out as a right and you as a wrong, then we. Then we might as well stop doing podcasts, you know, because if yeah. we, we are not coming anywhere. Yeah. In that way, it's really nice to keep it flowing and open. Mm. So hopefully, we come from a place of a place of inner knowing rather than dictating mm-hmm. whatever we talk about. Uh, it's really that I'm not an expert. I don't know it all, but I do my research and studies uh, instead of not questioning and I hope my words come up to inspire rather than finalize or you know as as you should know you are a special person in yourself and and um, as I told you for me you meant a lot for me because you um, challenged me on different ways to think and Mm -hmm. and uh, normal ways I think before you give me a alternative route and I start thinking and I, I really like Likewise. that. Likewise. So 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 I always enjoy meeting you and talk Thank to you. you. Yeah. Thank That's you. mean a lot for Likewise. me. Likewise. But the the start for this podcast now was we just met up on the street and we were start uh, starting talking about uh, the inner light. And my feeling is the the my perception of the inner light and and it was just fall in my head there so so uh, there's nothing I've been thinking about for 10 years but it's like if you have like a, a beautiful a lamp inside inside this room and everything is dark but as long as we have light in this lamp it will saturate or give energy or light I can see my wealth if it's my kids if it's my talent it's my family all I have in my life yeah and when this light is shutting down or dimmed down I don't see all the beautiful things I have around me and and uh, for me at least when when my light is shutting down or I, I don't see that clearly all the beautiful things I have around me I normally compensate with bad energy because if I lose like the light where I can appreciate all the things uh, if it's you mm-hmm. want to train harder or you do bad things or you let your ego in because you need to, to fill out in one way. So I think when people do really bad stuff, if you see around the world, I suspect something happened with that inner light and they're compensating because they have, they, 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 they're blind for mm-hmm. seeing all the beauty around them. And if you don't see beauty, you start doing not nice things. Mm-hmm. I mean, from a scientific view, we are nothing but light. We are, not, you know, we are light, we are photons. Um, how is it that happens that we lose that light if we are it? Huh. I'm, I'm asking that myself as yeah, well. Yeah. This idea of... I, I don't have light anymore. Is uh, it a thought? Is it is it the reality? Is it the truth? Or is it is it just a lot of thinking of in certain direction that attracts the same experiences? Then it really s- looks like that. But is it true? I, I, all the thing I I'm quite sure of. For myself, if the if um, the inner light or happiness, call it what you want, uh, the willingness to keep on living, uh, that you want to mm-hmm. live tomorrow, you want to see the next year, it's all about myself and what I'm saying to myself. Because my inner light, I, you cannot change it. Uh, a new car cannot change it. You can you can pit, uh, make different goals and you can reach them. And you can buy, okay, I buy a house for 100 million or do something like that. It's nothing going to happen with inside of me. Uh, only thing I'm going to happen with then me then is my ego. I'm going to, and ego can feel good as well. 
it's also a good feeling to to achieve something and you feel oh i'm very nice now but uh, the inner light i think is my responsibility and your responsibility i think it interacts with one another the ego and the light okay um i mean going back to the purpose of ego is to maintain this this body and this life and there are uses of that uh it receives information from everything around it let me go back to this light um i find us as human beings as radios you know we we can receive signals and we can transmit signals yeah um <clears throat> so we are in interchange with the environment around us similarly we influence the environment around us there is a continuous talk of the two now like attracts like mm-hmm. if my thoughts are in the nature of the positive thoughts my experiences will reflect that mm-hmm. and science has proved that if i'm seeing through the glasses that are a little tinted a little less light mm. then my experience will be quite blurry mm. and kind of dark so we have never understood better that the nature of our thoughts shapes our reality if we can take responsibility of that the light never goes out light never goes out anyway because energy never dies the energy is light mm. light is there mm. but our lifestyle our habitual thinking the field that we hold around us and the field that we interface with are all factors of that light or how that light shines mm. so we've got to start i think thinking ourselves not just as human body but a receiver and a transmitter of energy <laughs> Mm. Um I, I think they did some research because if if I'm uh, telling you a story when I I feel I received or a given some 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 interaction like a radio sender uh it's not easy to say because then people think oh, it's a little bit crazy but I think they did some research when I asked people uh on honesty and uh i think more people have that feeling and people don't have yeah but it's not that normal to talk about uh and that's quite interesting because i think it's many people when you when you speak what you speak now i can relate yeah but it's nothing i going boasting about out on the street because it's like a little bit of shadow mm-hmm. around it yeah so so that's uh, the same when you talk about light and how you perceive things and we can go down to so easy thing so i can see i can see a woman or i can see a car i think it's the woman and the car is perfect for me it's beautiful and you can ask the next man so no not my type mm-hmm. it's the same light it's the same view it's the same day yeah we're standing next to each other but me and you receive it in a different way i think for so long we've understood the universe and ourselves and science from a newton point of view you know gravity and newton the apple okay yeah but really uh, a lot has changed in the way we understand the universe and ourselves psychologically physiologically through the quantum physics we now know that there's a quantum field which newton didn't talk about explain about quantum yeah the quantum um there's a field there's a field of energy which i was referring to my environment is a field my body is a field of energy and although there is one field i'm part of the field as another field my energy impacts the bigger field the bigger field impacts me yeah so this is the quantum physics theory versus you know newton there is only the you know like a cause and effect yeah. now, i dropped cause this and effect and cause and effect doesn't quite answer the questions we face today anymore oh. because 
what that pen drops means to you is completely different than mine. Yeah. Then we can't really use the Newton anymore. Then we get into the quantum world or the quantum field where there is endless possibilities as as to be received and perceived by. Perception uh, is influenced by the emotions that we feel, Mm -hmm. by the thoughts we think. And in the quantum field, I pick up like attracts like, I pick up the experiences uh, experiences that are the reflection of my Mm. coding coding okay of no. my thought patterns of my emotional patterns in that way influence becomes important i was reading the other day nature of your thoughts negative or positive how long you've been thinking of them how often you think of them and the power of those mm. will form a belief sure and how strong the belief will influence your reality. So this is the quantum understanding of reality. That, that's the basic of religion. It's If a mirroring. Yeah, yeah. It's a mirroring. We yeah. really create our own reality. It's not about life is happening to me. It's about I am influencing life as much as it is impacting me. Yeah. So this we are kind of in this new thought. We are moving away from the merely to be victims of the cause and effect, but our power to also influence the cause. Hmm. And that gives us power, that gives us really the empowerment we've been lacking. Yeah, because that, that that's uh, special because um, you, can have, uh, you can have a government or you can have police force who is treating the people really, really bad, yeah? And that's not that's not new under the sun. We have that for thousands of years, and we also have it here in Norway today. A lot of people around in governmental positions are not treating the, the people of Norway in a correct way. They're abusing the power. Mm. But then if we step back, they are one of us, And that I don't understand. So when countries go to war, okay, we can have one crazy leader, but still this leader at one stage was me and you, you know? The policeman who was uh, using his power in a wrong way uh, today, he is the son of me and you. And and how can that The systems and structures, you know, these are also, they also can be seen from a perspective of energy. As I mentioned, how long that ideology, how long that uh, thought form has been applied for, how much power we have believed it with, and the nature of the content is going to determine the strength of that structure. Mm -hmm. We give power to the structures that we create. Mm. More more power we give to them, meaning more attention we give to them, structures become stronger. Mm. There was this period where more we talk about, you know, Trump, mm-hmm. stronger he got. For sure. Yeah. Sure. And, you know, any you know, sort of publicity is good. Yeah, yeah. All A, PR is good PR. Anywhere we give attention, we make it stronger. Mm. In fact, our ability to influence the movements of energy is so powerful. It's we really give it either importance or lack of it. Mm-hmm. Um, so we feed the system when we criticize it, when we support it, when we click on it. On In a way, we're seeking neutrality to keep it balanced, neutrality or the perfect balance of action and reaction not overdoing any. Mm. It's that really good balance that we are seeking. And I mean, politics is just one way of looking at it, but really in our lives, it goes back to the balancing of knowing where to act, knowing where to react, knowing where to observe. And that is the quantum observation. I want to maybe share 
something that is really interesting about the quantum physics experiments. They took uh, photons, light, mm -hmm. and they shoot it through a panel. They put on the panel two dots or uh, holes. As they shot the photons through the panel, it was expected that the light would go through the holes. Sure. And it did. Then they give a little break to the experiment, but the video camera was rolling. They have left the room. And when they came back and they watched later on that video, they have seen that the photons started to act in their own way through that panel. Okay. So the photons that were solid started to act as liquid and they were going through, not just through the holes, but through the panel itself, which is a liquid form. Yeah. What I'm trying to say is, when the observer puts his attention on the photon, the photon reacts as you expect. But when you are not looking, when there is no observer, the photon has its own behavior. Mm. And these, you know, photons are the, are the quants in the universe. They have their own behaviors, but they are also influenceable. Mm. If thought is a form of energy, when we observe it, we can also influence its movements. When we are not observing it, it tends to have its own behavior. And when it is not observed for a long time, it tends to solidify its own behavior and we lose control of it. Hmm. Am I making sense? Yeah, I think. Um, so we have the power to influence our thoughts and emotions, but it requires a certain level of awareness. We have to know they are there. And you have to know you can yeah. <laughs> influence and them. <laughs> if the nature of the thoughts are negative, they will form a certain quality of vibration that will dim the light. Hmm. There are many experiments on, I'm sure you've heard about this, you know, Japanese scientist who spoke to the water crystals positively hmm. and they looked really, really nice. They, oh, they shaped really nice things like the you know, flower of life, etc. You can go Google and look up at it because exactly. the crystals is actually changing. Yes, crystals are changing by the energy of the sound mm. uh, because vibration can come through the sound um, or through the color uh, and through the waves. Yeah. So he has used the sound vibrations to influence the crystals mm. and where he put negative connotation in his you know, voice tone. When they were observed under the microscope, they really looked ugly and they start to look very catastrophic and mm. in a way of like a chaotic forms. So let's talk science then, you know, if we are to say that our thoughts really mm. can be influenced. But uh, on, on this, um, this hurts all the, this, um, this sound, is it five twenty eight or uh, is it, you four three two five two eight? These are the positive ones, yeah. yeah. And there are more. And and uh, mm -hmm. and also we have some negative ones. But mm -hmm. the, if you if you listen to um, to the music of Beethoven, all those yeah. is the positive one. Yeah. But the the Nazis, Second World War Two, they actually used the negative ones yeah. on propaganda. Yeah. So if people think this is just some huga booga, that that, that the the people are using it. Yeah, the governments as a tool, use it as yeah, a tool to stress you out, sure. to make you relax. Yeah. So, so that's a way of propaganda. Yeah, and and that's that's um, it's not really discussable. It's that's that's a fact. Yeah, it's it's that's chopped in stone. So we know that, and but even if we know that, I think a lot of people are not aware of yeah. what kind of energy is yeah. actually influencing them. I mean, the quantum field is very new anyway, so it is, you know, fairly new. And most of us went to school in the 70s, 80s, would have not known the quantum physics. And it's still not part of the school education system. But certainly the governments use it. <laughs> certainly yeah, yeah, yeah. the militaries use it. Certainly the 5G uses it. Yeah. So it is an operation and it really began with pre-Einstein period. But uh, it's just the public that yeah. really needs to... And this is not a, cons a little more. This is not a conspiracy theory because mm. I if if we put out on the table here today uh, a tool who can 
make people to don't do stuff or do stuff or change the way to thinking and we think nobody want to use it then you're proper crazy mm. because if you have that tools and we can we can change the mind of people with a tool and and the military and the governments they spend millions or if not billions and research on this so this, this is this is, this is a yeah. fact yeah. so so today to think oh no that's a conspiracy theory if government used that if they have the tool they're going to use it that's it it's nobody oh i think it's not morally correct mm. they want to change our mind that's it yeah i believe there is a lot of material out there on the internet to to research and learn about these topics it needs time and effort to study it it needs time and research and i really enjoy that process myself um anyone who has a different view i really welcome uh as long as they have an antithesis for it and they publish a book and a research for it then i will buy into that too but until they do that i will go with the you know with the stats of what is given to me but you know? th- that's also a little bit dangerous rabbit hole to to dive into as well because when you f- same uh, as uh, we um, attract what we are thinking mm-hmm. so so if you don't if you not have a healthy mind when you look at studies like this uh, it can quickly eat up your life and you actually get a proper conspiracy theory so so it's um it's a, it's a balancing act you have to live your life uh in the same way if if you uh, look at soap opera on television for like four hours a day that's not good for you but if you so you, i think uh this is the thing about information we should be able to receive it but also come to our own truth about it mm. it's uh it's a very tricky thing to keep learning and not having enough not having your own personal view on it uh if we can have our own personal truth and view on what information we've been receiving then i feel it's a healthy balance otherwise it's just another dogma um we must come to our own conclusion What's of the dogma? information dogma is what is given to you and you buy in um it's uh it's a fast food meal mm. you just take it like it's a uh, it's what we are conditioned into yeah dogma dogma okay it's uh, what we were told that was the, that was the truth and it started running the life of ours it started basing the fundamentals of our lives but we didn't quite know whether that was true or not that that's the dogma yeah. dogma is like a veiler of the truth to me you know you know the news um certainly here in norway was uh maybe not right now in 2022 but we don't have to go many years back if it's on the news it's the truth you know if it, if it's if no 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 they said it on television mm-hmm. one guy of sitting reading a script told it to me so then it's a truth we, that's a dogma you just have to listen because if they send it on the, the government television channel that's the truth don't think about it just act accordingly and that's a little bit crazy that's i think it's going back to light okay so the light is information light is coming through let's say through this coffee cup it will only it will only go through a certain part of it and maybe from the other end it will come but it will come through the form of this but the actual light is more than this it is bigger than this but when it passes through this it will it will be broken it will be filtered yeah 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 similarly if you see the news as information it will come through the filters of the land that is saying that mm. so the same news in norway is not given in the same context in other parts of the world so if inf- information comes in but how we relay it depends on us what filter we put on it yeah exactly so and we have filters we 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 need i mean in order to have systems and structures we have filters otherwise there is no system 
Mm. So the system of the media, um, each country will have its own filters to see the things through. Otherwise, we have the same news across the globe. Yeah. But That's that wouldn't be good either. No? That wouldn't be right with the diversity of life or diversity of perspectives. But I, I think w- when the news is getting government owned or political owned, we are in bad weather, I think. But I think it, what you're saying today can be news for me or for other people. And it's as long as uh, it's out there and I can find it and we don't get blocked or, or hide it away or, or somebody get uh, a bigger stage in, a, in not a correct way, uh, I think we just have to trust our fellow human beings in the world to actually see if you're speaking from your heart or if you're speaking your truth or not. But today... Uh, you can have politician, you can have uh, uh, police, or you can have news. So you can go in and say what you are saying now is very wrong, and we we gonna we gonna show you out from this. You're not gonna get a space on this stage. And then it's the systems you're talking about who are actually making the filters. I think you can make your own filter. I can make my own filter because you already do. Yeah, our perspective is our filter. So we already see the world through our own filters versus eight billion filters around me. Yeah. Can you imagine that? Can we ever be right? Can we ever be wrong? <laughs> it's it's the filters that we see it through. <coughs> and then there's the mirrors. <laughs> the mirrors, you know? Yeah, but I think if if you if you um if you take politics or or um governments or you take um beliefs or, or um, Christianity or, or Buddhism or, or Hinduism or what if you if you take it out of the picture I think we have quite the same filters I think I don't think my my filter is too different from your filter but because my belief I learned this on school you learned this on school there your parents said this my parents said this we are already there are certain filters that we're born with, I think, Put as a collective. Inside, yeah. But, but then uh, there are some differences based on upbringing and, and culture. So if you pull down the walls of all the crap around us, all the TikToks and all the stuff like this, uh, I don't think your filter and my filter is that... In the essence, it is not that different. In the essence, those shared filters um, are really what bonds us. Otherwise, there would be no humanity. And the most unique thing about being human is that we're very much of a team player and a cooperative beings, you know. This is in our nature. We are we share the same essence. Um we relate to one another very well as a species. You know, I relate to you, you relate to me. Um much better than the animals relate to each other. There is more of a shared field of values that brings us together. If human is a value-based, you know, sort of creature, you know, we have values, uh, you know, values of love and compassion and mercy and and kindness, which is unique to human. Um, there are those shared filters that we experience from into this life but degree of them can be less or more as we experience life depending on on what we have lived Uh, but there are definitely shared foregrounds that we build life upon because if you hurt yourself now I would feel bad for you. This is what I'm talking yeah, about, yeah. yeah. For sure. You would relate to my pain. For sure, yeah. And yeah. I would try to do whatever in my power mm. to help you, yeah. to, to relieve that pain. But in the system we're building up, and, and, and it's a tons, lot of research on it, and sometimes uh, it can be system, it can be laws, it uh, can be communities, and before we know it, it's me and it's them. Because I'm in a group, 
Så så if you see in uh, in World War 2 uh, they didn't relate to your pain because you were on the other side. And that that's that's the thing happened with the police forces all over the globe. They have a lot of research then there are the police force even if that's sons of daughters of good people but they're indoctrinated in a system and they don't relate to the people they don't give a damn because you're not on my team so you can bleed yourself to death and i feel nothing and that's crazy at the system because me and you know if i hurt myself you're going to feel something if you hurt we're going to feel something but between us we can pull up a world of a system Mm-hmm. Uh, t- uh, t- uh, some beliefs people learn us and we stop feeling yeah that's crazy systems have that's certain like psychopaths m- systems have certain rules to obey system you know that's what makes a system yeah system has certain norms to obey to keep their systemhood yeah so although we are the same species the system must follow its own rules oh yeah um, and how that interacts with the public of course there will be you know there yeah i i, I don't think I, we are just thinking now but uh, that's that's healthy but if everybody understand we are human and we all are built up from light or from the same system and act accordingly we w- wouldn't have wars because then you wouldn't do it like that, you know. But uh, our need to belong to something is so great. Yeah. So if I can belong to your group, that that's okay, then you can be my goddess. I can do whatever for you. We are a tribalist you. species. We yeah. want to be part of a group. Yes. Because we are not loners, you see. We are very social animals. Yeah. And it's quite lonely it's if you say, August, you're going to be part of the world. Then I, f- I, I wouldn't feel the connections. So it's easier for me to be part of your group or some other group. Yeah. But at the same time, we're very individualistic. You know, this idea of individualism that came through. Uh, you know, you're a unique person. You know, you are the best. You know, there's no one other than you. It made us, okay in a way of feel empowered but also i'm an individual you're an individual that means we are separate but we live in the same field mm. but there's two different systems then and systems have their own rules mm. so my rules when it is not in line with yours we we are going to clash mm-hmm. we have different opinions we will clash But if we embrace the diversity making life possible, you know, if there are different opinions, it is welcome. If there are different species on Earth, it is welcome. It makes up the environment. It makes up the ecology. If we were the same, there would be no development. Hmm. In that way, being individualist is a great thing. But the higher end of individualism ends up in loneliness. If I consider me, myself and I as an entity so much for so long, but not as part of you, I lose that unity. Mm. Then as a social animal, I lose my social contact with my environment. I become a loner. I become isolated. It's me, my truth, my life, my right. It becomes a stagnant, solid system. And solid cannot go for long solid is meant to break at some point the fluid does Uh, so adaptability to someone else's opinion adaptability to what life brings in different forms good or bad adaptability is a great human quality that we're born with Mm. but more rigid we get i.e more individualistic we get it's me you know i'm all right as long as i'm all right it's the ego As long as I'm all right, it doesn't matter what's happening on the other side of the world. Thinking that I'm separate from that, thinking I'm distant from that is is the rigidity begins. Then the systems break apart. And when they break apart, they don't talk anymore. You know, they don't communicate anymore. They oppose each other. And thoughts and emotions are just like that, too. If the thoughts and emotions are not talking to each other, but opposing each other, they start to break. You know, it's similar. It's really. 
it's a little bit back to uh, the first podcast you, you talk about uh, Buddha and um, when when um, when he left <laughs> out from his yard with all the richness and all all the wealth wealth and people around him at all he just wanted to distance himself to find back his original filters mm-hmm. so he even uh, constricts himself for food and 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 uh, to just find where did it all start where did the human start so it's uh, in way when you talk like this i, I can't see the parallels he just remove all all the energies was coming in yeah. from everywhere and the way he was taught to think and feel and react and try to just zero it out even if it's not eating some food because food will also affect you in a way a egg will affect you in a different way from a fish mm-hmm. a pork will be different from 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 uh, red meat so so everything is pushing or pulling or self yeah, in one directions yeah there is the polarity we live in a very dual life there is the good and bad the right and wrong hot and cold mm. you know beautiful ugly in between the two we have this sort of dance of life and it's a constant request of balance finding your balance between the two one couldn't exist without the other mm. we've got to understand this on this plane of earth Oh, I wish we only had the good. Well, we wouldn't appreciate it if it wasn't for the bad, you know. So this is the reality we live in. At least here we do. Um, Based on this dance, we form some belief systems. So what beliefs do I have of me? I think Buddha wanted to break that, you know, in in the main. I was the son of a prince. That's the belief because it comes with many ideas. He wanted to break that belief to see if it was true. And when he stepped out of the palace, he was no longer the son of the prince. So it might, so it must have not been the truth. Yeah. So through these little inquiries, he has come to the basis of who, who he really was. Um, that ended up to not much, really. Not much. <laughs> um, once the... The skin of the layers are peeled one by one, like the onion layers, as we call it, the layers of consciousness, the layers of being, mental, emotional, physical layers, peel after another. You end up with nothing. Mm. I mean, science calls it, we are 99% space, and uh, we are nothing. (laughs) But we keep focusing on the 1%. That is the (laughs) thing. I don't know why we do that. It's... That's one other thing you you said to me, I uh, really... uh, took along and <coughs> it's um, if, if you if you keep it simple and we, and we can see uh, the planet earth uh, we are living and are living on now and we go we can take here in in Hamar in this room I have okay I'm something in this room okay we go out we take a couple of more streets I'm quite small, and we go uh, in a big piece of Norway. I'm very small, and if we bring along Sweden and Denmark, I'm nothing. Mm-hmm. And if we bring mm-hmm. along all the earth in Cambodia, mm. China, every I'm nothing. Mm-hmm. And if we even push further out and say last thousand years, or the last ten thousand years, who is August then? You don't exist. I don't exist. Don't it's exist. nothing, mm. and. The day I can appreciate that, I think maybe I'm going to start doing something good for the existence for everybody. Because that's, a, again, I'm back up to the ego. Because when I re- truly understand, I'm just a tiny, tiny, tiny monocle in a big, big ocean. Then I probably get in peace with myself. Because when I run around and believe I'm something, that you are the ocean. Yeah. Then then I'm going to make a lot of trouble for myself, people around me. So to to come to peace with yourself 
that you are you are nothing. I like the analogy of going up and up. I recently used that in my classes as well, like an eagle, you know, and the eagles have a very sharp vision, you know, they are very much up there, but they can see their prey from miles away, yeah. that, that level of vision. They keep their eye on the goal and they're able to land upon the prey. I have once seen in a zoo how the you know, eagle got the chick so like just you know, so fast. The eagle perspective is used a lot in uh, philosophy and yoga. Being able to see things from a higher perspective is very important because who are you to a person on the plane now that is 5,000 feet above? You don't exist. Don't exist. They don't but here you are. You can swear this pen exists because I see it. Yeah. But go up 50 meters, it doesn't. So I was referring this analogy for our problems, for example. You know, I mean, when I am in it, it's so real and it's so big. <laughs> but when I go up from a different perspective, up with my perspective, they don't exist <laughs> either. <laughs> but when I'm inside it, they're so real. For sure. They have shapes, they have colors, that, you know, they have certain fragrances. I swear it exists. But as I go higher in my vision of observation, not in it, but a little above it, a little outside it, I see it differently. Mm. So, not being too stuck in what we generate as thoughts and emotions, seeing them, but also allowing us to see them from a different angle, mm. different height, can give us a better perspective of what is really happening, you know? To give give a little bit street view on that one, it's um, it's quite easy to sit here with you now today and tell what I should do different 10 years ago because it's away mm. from me. Mm. But when I'm standing in the situation, yeah. Yeah. I play with the cards I dealt mm. and uh, I, I think I do the best of it. But in hindsight, when I look back on it, I say, what did you really think there, you know? Mm. But maybe we could teach ourselves to step out from our own life or our feelings about perceptions of things day to day, and we can actually do more. Maybe when we sit there now in 10 years, yeah. we can say, no, I think it was a good good solution, this one. It was a good solution back then in that scenario for who you were. Yeah. But, but today, for who you are, that is must that, that must be different. Uh, otherwise, there is no life. It must be it must be different in a way new your new self has a different approach to that same perspective yeah, because you have different so cards. time is important time and experiences and what you call perfect solution back then to you today may not be mm. and similarly what you call not the best solution back then maybe just right today it, we we don't know we there's no fixed answer to anything because that is stagnancy we can't have rigid, stagnant views on life. It must be fluid and, and adaptable, mm. um, not solid. Solid is structures and systems, remember? It's, mm -hmm. it's, and it needs laws and rules. We don't want to live with laws and rules. We want fluid adaptability situations based on that moment. Yeah. But to come to that conclusion, we must be aware what solution is needed for the best possible outcome. Yeah. Uh, that needs, a, again, a bit of an outsider perspective to come to the optimal solution, you know? Otherwise, I'm only creating a solution from the mindset I created the problem with. Yeah. So go out a little, zoom, you know, zoom out a little and see what else is maybe possible there for me mm. that I haven't seen before. Mm. That, that's a good question. Yeah, that, that's... Um, sometime, if I... If I um, if if I get myself in some trouble, could be a minor minor thing, and uh, I um, make a big case of it, you know, I think about it before I sleep. It's, it's a big it's a big deal for me in my life. When I'm sitting right here now, it's a big 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 thing. And sometimes if I back out from the situation and say, okay, 
uh, what's going to happen if this thing I'm thinking about now is going to happen? Okay, you're going to... Um, this person is not going to want to talk with me after this one. I say, okay, fair enough. Uh, does that going to affect my life in a big way for day to day? No, probably not. I only talk to this person maybe once a year. Okay, should I make a big, big case of it now? Or should I let it go, you know? Looking at the big picture. But when I get the feeling it's it's eating me up alive, you know? But sometimes if I'm backing out, I think, what what is the consequences? You know, the consequences is this, this, this. Could I live with this consequences? For sure. Is this going to make you more uh, unhappy? No. Should I sit, think about it for one week now? Sure not. There you were, There we are now talking about emotions, yeah. not, not thoughts anymore. Mm. So now we're talking about the heart as the information receiver and receptor and, and transmitter. Because mm. I think we started with thought and mind and brain. Mm. Now we're moving on to feeling into things. How is that going to make me feel? Um, it's a question that comes from a thought, but it's the feeling inside that makes us come to the solution. It's, mm. it's the feeling. It's always the feeling. Therefore, um, I feel, you know, therefore I am is the new new norm. Okay. I feel, therefore I am. But um, could, could you decide yourself what you're going to feel sometime? C- could you change the way to think so you can feel differently? Or uh, is it about how much um, energy I give the feeling? Sometimes I think you have to stop feel a little bit and, and just move on. You can influence the feeling as much as feeling influences <coughs> you. Remember, we said the field influences you and you can influence the field as well. Mm. It's a two way. But so often we let the feeling influence us. We feel powerless in front of the feelings. We don't think we have the power to influence that cause of that feeling. So just like thoughts, I can influence feelings according to science. Um, Emotions are generated from the heart and they have a really bigger impact than the much more than, you know, than the brain in creating reality. Energetic field of the heart energy, heart as a magnetic field, is 5000 more than than the brain. Okay. So it's the heart that really generates reality, meaning it's the feelings that we have towards things that generate our reality, not the thoughts. Feelings are a lot stronger than the thoughts. It's not about having to drink this coffee. I must have a feeling about this coffee in order to like it or not. It, it is not a thought, it's a feeling. Yeah. So the energy field of the heart can hold more information, therefore has more power to create your reality than the brain. Mm. And this is, again, recent, uh, you know, recent work. The, uh, the electric impulse, they also say, the electric impulse of the heart has more power to influence the human immune system. Huh. Uh, your positive emotions will keep you well, your negatives. Similarly, the information that comes from the heart will influence the environment very so much stronger. Why do we feel good in certain environments as we walk in? And why do we suddenly feel not good in mm. certain environments? Because there is a field of electric energy there that is generated by the people in it. We don't see it, but we pick it up as radio transmitters because mm. we can sniff energy. We can feel, we can sense energy. It's not just these five senses. It's the inner sensing of the energy since we are energy. We can sense energy. Mm. Even as we walk by some people on the street, we are picking information, (laughs) but we don't realize. So in a way, is this feeling mine or does it belong to someone else is a very good question when it comes to repeating feelings yeah, does this belong to me or was it input into me and that that's um, a big topic it's uh, when people are feeling so bad they're ending off to taking their own life ending the life 
that is like the thousand dollar question. Uh, and people are, it's not easy to answer on, but I understand when people go that far, uh, the light is shut off or the feeling is so, what do you think happened? Why, why, why can people feel that bad? They want to end it because we all want to prosper and go and and do something and do an impact or I think there are some thing. there are many factors there I'm not an expert on this but there are many factors there there are factors of the genes okay uh, if it was in the family if it was in the generations the DNA okay. it's there yeah it's there um, so DNA is one of the major factors mm. if it was in the lineage um, then there is the current life of the person, the accumulation of how long and what and how much powerful they've been thinking of a certain thing and how powerful that feeling became of a belief that is harder to crack. It's going back to the content of the emotions for a period of time, how they have been, how often they have been taught, how powerful they were, they become solid to unbreak as belief systems. And I guess when it becomes so rigid in the, in the negative form, we don't see solution anymore mm. because it really influences our entire thinking, feeling structure. It over dominates the system. It's a bit like cancer, you know, that's what happens in the cells. Eat you up alive. Yeah. They eat you up alive. So when a certain negative thought structure has become so repetitive and powerful over time, frequently taught and felt, it, it, it can dominate you. At the same time, those such, such tremendous, such, such big pressures that are put on the consciousness at times, such darkness, let's say, yeah. such pressure that is on the form, um, can have an amazing actually influence. What we call the dark nights of the soul okay. can really give birth to a brand new reality. If you read about the life of um, Eckhart Tolle, he has, uh, he is like the main, you know, sort of pioneers of the awareness and the mindfulness. He came up with his teachings when he was about to kill himself on a bench in London. There's a lot of breakthroughs in human development in our culture or science that came on the brink of having just to give up life. At that moment of giving up, a tremendous energy can come into the human consciousness. And there are many examples of that. I mean, I like the story of, you know, how do we really produce the diamond? We apply a lot of pressure on it, yeah. you know? So the psyche sometimes needs such tremendous pressure to break through a new reality. So we can see those moments as potentials of birth, or we can see it as final end. Mm. Again, it's a perspective. Uh, from a me you know, medical perspective, in those very hard to leave times, those moments of new birth, there's a molecule called the DMT. Mm -hmm. It's released in the body. And in our human lives, it is released two times, when we are born mm -hmm. and when we die. So one begins the journey, one ends the journey into the next transition. So this molecule is even there to say high pressure in the form of DMT helps you give birth to a new reality. Mm. So they talk a lot about the ego death in that way. When our ego is dead, like the Buddha did, yeah. he has gone beyond himself 
into a new reality. But if, if we're going to define uh, ending your own life, and we can say, okay, I can, uh, I can do with a rope or a gun, whatever, yeah. But so that we agreed upon is ending your life, you know, is final. But how should we define uh, if I slowly eat myself to death I could my potential is to be 85 years old but I'm going to end it at 65 and that's a lot of small choices I take I can smoke cigarettes I can drink booze I can drive fast I can do many things who accelerate my ending mm-hmm. and traffic mm. isn't that also suicide in a different way yeah we really so as I think we all, most of us have that inside. Or okay, some some is the extreme way, and the ending it like brutally. But in a way, many people I know live their life, including myself, uh, in a way who don't build up on mm-hmm. to to turn eighty five. Mm. Maybe only get fifty, sixty. I don't know. Yeah, the miracles don't exist in that way, you know. What we put in is what we get. That this is another law of the universe. The energy you put in is exactly what you get. But why is it's that different um, to go end it outside this room now, or if I end it in fifteen years old uh, year because I know what I put inside my body probably gonna kill me. It's like ninety percent big chance I gonna end it between sixty and seventy, closer to eighty to ninety. It's the same thing. You mean, you mean the time period is slow. You just, Although you just do habits. it, you do you do the same exact same thing, but you do it in a slower yeah, way. Because you drink yourself to death or whatever, yeah. Because you have a lot of people who are addicted to drugs or alcohol, or or, or smoke excesses or may or, uh, or cigarettes or working fifteen, sixteen hours a day. It doesn't kill them the next day, but it kills them over time. Yes. Because the repetition, again, going back to the energy field, repetition and how often and how powerful it is done over a period will impact. Sure. I mean, human body is strong enough not to be impacted by a kilo of sugar you eat today. Next day you don't die. But if you do it every week, three times a week for five years, Mm -hmm. it does. So the frequency, how often you do it and how much you do it mm. is but going to take the effect uh, if, ultimately. If, if I eat uh, three kilo sugar every week in, in candies and whatever and soda, stuff like this, I can't really care too much about myself then. I Can you say, I think August really loves himself. He, he's in a good spot when I'm actually doing something bad. Is that too much of or August might be liking himself, but he doesn't know that sugar is not good for him. Yeah. So information is important again, you see. We need to learn a little about the food we eat. Because mm. it could be just a habitual thing from your family, and your family would never want to uh, harm you. Why would that be bad? Mm. That, that could be the belief. Mm. So researching into what we eat and what they contain and looking at the back of the packages in the food looking why what is in there i mean how many of us really look there's so many e numbers in the food we eat and what are e's you know additives and what what is in those do we ever get curious about these things and that's when you talk about the information point there that's quite crazy because uh my generation at least uh if my kids are doing something right they have birthday or got christmas we're gonna we're gonna celebrate something or uh, or uh, you do something very good mm-hmm. we celebrate it but giving their more or less poison you know we got if, if you if you buy uh, ice cream normal ice cream in norway uh that's a dosage quite high on sugar for me and the same ice cream i give to my daughter and she weighs 10 kilo you know She's 10% of my body weight, but she get the same amount sugar because I care about her. But I know it's going to make me fat or me unhealthy 
but still I, the information is not out there so I actually think about it you know because if you really care about you, your kid you, you take her out and uh, you go exercise or you walk a trip or you read a book for her or you prepare with your own heart a good meal some, some proper good quality meal for her then you really care about her but if you stop at a gasoline station and just buy ice cream that's not caring there's a TED talk of was it Jamie Oliver, the chef? Yeah. I I used to use it in my in my classes when I taught language of English years ago. Uh, I used to show it to the kids I taught English to. He went to US for a TED talk and he had a bucket like a construction bucket you move some cement with yes. the big ones, and he filled it with sugar. And he poured it in front of the stage, in the middle of the stage on TED. He says, this is the amount of sugar that is in the milk the American schools are giving to students every morning. Over a year, this is the amount of sugar your child is being put in, into the system. Yeah. And he called the government a murderer. He yeah. said, you are killing your own children. Yeah. And the audience was shocked <coughs> shocked yeah so how it has been mm. yeah because if, if you have like a bowl of sugar here now and we put an, a, a big spoon in and we uh, walk out um, in the school or we go out in the street now and we find some parents and they have kids and say here your kid can have three spoons of uh, pure sugar and they say no we don't want to give that for them. And the next moment, they buy our ice cream or chocolate or, or some candy. It's the same exact thing. Mm. But how is that information get lost? That That's the same thing. This candy is made from the same sugar. But if I put the bowl out, uh, if, I, if I have a, a birthday for my kids. It's in a I, different form, yeah, but it's the same thing. Same thing, perspective. Yeah. So then I can yeah. put a bowl in front of all the kids in the birthday with sugar and spoons yeah. the parents who said we are not going to give mm -hmm. uh, august a chance to give my kids yeah. pure sugar that's really bad to do yeah. i believe that individuals have responsibility to educate themselves to see beyond the form the essence is still sugar mm. <laughs> whether it's ice cream or the you know gotteri it is still, uh, sugar or the systems also need to educate public about this as well well, I mean, I, I think this, the schools have a big role, the teachers do. And uh, again, it goes back to the system, informing the teachers and the schools to do that. And there are countries who do that. More coffee? You know, yes, please. I mean, there are countries who do that. It's not non-existent. Uh, so it exists, actually. But Maybe not every country, but food education <laughs> is important. That's very. But in uh, yeah, in the food, I and I it like really impacts the thoughts and emotions. I must say, oh, for sure, because if you think sure. about where sugar was used, it was used in the Vietnam War. You know, to was keep it? the soldiers stimulated. Okay. Yeah. And, um, and the the reaction in the brain of sugar is quite similar to you know cocaine. Hmm. It's a very fast high, and a very fast drop. Yeah, the drop is so. Tremendous. In that way, your brain doesn't know the difference between the two. Doesn't know. So that's why it is not easy to give up sugar. You see, it's a very addictive content. Oh yeah, I'm a highly addicted to it. I don't eat too much of it, but uh, it's, it's enough if I. Um, if I'm stealing some candies for my kids on the Saturday, mm -hmm. I'm a bad daddy, so I mm -hmm. buy some candy at them. But uh, my youngest one now, when we buy candy, um, it's not a big bag. We uh, pick mm -hmm. out a little bit, yeah? So she, she used to not uh, filling up her stomach on it. But if I'm stealing some candy from them or eat a cookie with you today, tomorrow I'm going to have craving. I, I'm almost feel like out of balance i'm not not yeah. happy if i eat some meat Certain some vegetables like I'm, I'm just mm. ooh, i'm i'm not full before i get 
so certain sugar. foods are like that. You know, banana wouldn't give you the same reaction, although it is still sugar. But uh, they ch- have but, some but, but a it. chocolate does. <laughs> so, what is not, what is human made usually is addictive. What is natural is not. Yeah, makes sense because they want to sell more of it. So, no. So if if I stay away from sugar for like two three weeks, it's not a problem. With one party with a cookie, I'm yeah. on. Yeah, it's a again. very repetitive thing. Yeah, you want another one. You want another one. It's a bit like that. It's yeah. this addictive. So you cannot negotiate with it. You know, so you cannot negotiate with terrorists because if I take a little bit, that's mm. the same as I'm going to take more of it. So I have to like go cold turkey on it, mm-hmm. or else I have no control of it. Also, it's good to have a variety of things in our food. I mean, it's okay to have some cookies now and then, as as much as if the seventy percent is based on good things. We, we you know we can allow ourselves a little something here and there. The problem is as long as one doesn't over dominate. Yeah. You know, it's um, the problem is when I allow myself every here and there. Uh, it's easy for me to fall out. And it start dominate again. Mm. It's uh, it's quite hard it's to find the, the balance. It's always the amount. It's the frequent. How frequent you do it. How much you do it. How often you do it. Mm. That's how energy again mm. forms. But as with the way we live our life, and habits and food and everything is also a way of committing suicide, I believe. So a lot of things I does do in my life, I'm not stupid. So I understand this is going to shorten it, but it's uh, it's not that easy to think. Ah, this after when I'm seventy, eighty, we take the problem as it comes, you know, and we don't think in a. In it's also the people we surround ourselves with, you know. They they say if you surround yourself with the f- with the five people, you become the sixth of that group. Yeah. As we said, we are very social animals and we're very adaptable to each other. So, you know, when a couple is married for 30 years, look at them, they look very similar. Yeah. <laughs> they talk similar, they act similar, they even look similar. There's, you know, some partners look similar. Yeah. So we really adapt and mold into each other very fast. So our social circle and who we surround ourselves with will really influence our psychology. Yeah. If we surround ourselves with people who have, in, you know, inspirations, some goals in their life and positive feelings and some aspirations, then we become the sixth in the group. If it is the opposite, we are mm. systems, you see. Mm. We mold into the system. Um, the music we listen to has a huge impact yeah. in the way we feel and think. Harmonious vibrations, uh, music frequencies seems to put us in the similar mode and very fast and repetitive movement music. I think there's a French music called the dubstep, the you know teenagers love. It is said that it's the most dangerous you know it's the most dangerous music to the consciousness. Okay. It's this repetitive, very violent music yeah. that influences the frequencies in, in the brain. Um, listening to Mozart is different than listening to rock music for your psychology. But Mozart, it's it's a um, it's a hard music to like. You have to really go more in to appreciate music like that. You you n- really need to dive into it because it, that's not fast food, you know. You, not you, fast food, no, no. You it's need real you, music. You need really need to take it mm. in, you know. Yeah. But uh, a hit on the radio because it has lyrics. Yeah, it just it has lyrics. Put play and it's gonna give you emotion. But if you're gonna get emotion from Mozart, you really need to. It's almost when you're gonna listen to a philosopher, you know, you you need to clear your mind and open up your mind to get the knowledge in. If yeah. you just put on some some heavy words from some some smart people. Uh, and you're not in the mood, it's not going to stick. You mm-hmm. need, and same I be- feel about Mozart and stuff like this. You, 
You need to open up your soul. You do, but also other than Mozart, there are some harmonious music. You know, we were talking about the four, three, two, and five, two, eight frequencies. They're very much in line with the happier end of our psyche. And there are lots of those available online. Um, when you sleep, you can leave them on. When you're studying, you can leave them on. They work in harmony with the brain waves, uh, unlike the opposition of the brain waves, mm. the optimum brain waves that are delta and alpha and things like that. But the words you speak towards yourself and others, these really very much influence your energy field the way you speak to people and yourself. Um, yeah, and, and uh, just to put that to a street level as well, everybody know when you call somebody, if they are lying in bed talking to you in the telephone, you can feel it. Mm-hmm. If they're sitting, you can feel it. Mm-hmm. If you're standing, you can feel it, you know. So if, if you're gonna pitch in something, you need to stand up, you cannot sit in your couch and try to sell something. Even the position of the body. Yeah, Yeah. you need to uh, straighten up. And and that energy is actually transferring through your voice. Mm. So Mm. so when you're talking about your energy of the voice can have an impact on people around you, for sure. And and, and you can can talk to your kids at a deeply word. Hi, no are bra. You can, you can, and that's impact them. You can talk in a positive way. But for the kids or for your dog or your cat, you use it all the time. But you forget when you meet people in the street, in the shop, in work, you forget how your voice can impact them. True, true. And the sounds that we are exposed to as well. Yeah. The voices and the sounds around us, if it's a very uh, noisy environment, it's not comfortable. Similarly, too much light is not so comfortable. Uh, too much sound and heavy sounds of maybe traffic is not fun to listen to. Uh, but nature sounds are very much in line with our with our positive thoughts. So I always find the biggest remedy, medicine, for unbreaking all of these influences that are unbreakable around me. I can't escape them. It is always there, like the you know high pitch volumes and and. Um, the sounds, the best way to remedy those is really the nature. Just spend the time, spend one hour in in the nature. You are eliminating those vibrations. Mm. Spending time in nature. Last question. Mm. In your life or or your perspective, what, what is the meaning? of your life, you think? What is the meaning? Why are we here? And where are we going? (laughs) We are here to learn. We are here to learn and pass on what we learned to the next generation. Uh, This is a school, I feel. This is a school. Um, There are certain exams to pass in life. Uh, to find the meaning of life. Um, There's a potential that we are here with, an individual potential that we come here with, and our purpose is really to find and live that, uh, because that's what we are best at, that's what we are good at, and everything has a purpose. Nature has a purpose, animals have a purpose, I must have a purpose. My purpose must not be just sleep, eat, and and breed, you know. I must have a purpose. And there must be a place in this place for me to deliver my purpose. So the meaning of life for me is to be comfortable with who you are and your gifts and to develop them continuously to serve your fellow beings. And along the way there will be challenges and with the right attitude you pass those challenges and move on to the next level of your perspective Um, so that you see there are so many ways to see things Mm. and hopefully each time better and of course the ultimate meaning of life is love 
is to know that you are love beyond it all. Mm. And everything else is just a spectrum of love. <laughs> But do you believe something after this love life? I believe in the continuum of life, <coughs> not the afterlife or pre-life. I live, I believe in the energy living continuously and transitioning into different things, not dying. So in that way, there's only progress. There's only the next evolution, the next level of being, the next level of seeing. Um, I believe in continuum. Yeah, because I talk to a lot of people and they believe that that um, your knowledge and your energy it's like out there someplace, you know. So people can tap in, or, or everything is out there in the universe, and we can tap in in the field. In mm. the field, yeah. So you believe what you are experience and what you are learning now is shaping me into something new. And just you be a part of this. I already am. Yeah. I I already am in this experience I go through now at this time of today, mm. at this moment. I I already am. Um, I am part of the field. And I am the field as well. Mm -hmm. Like, can you? It's a very translucent. It 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 kind of passes through each other. Mm. I mean, this form that looks solid, the energy passes through, you know. Mm. It's just the skin, you know. But through that, the light passes through. Information passes through. So I am the field, but also influenced by the field. I make up the field with my thoughts and information, but the field also has its own. So we are interfacing all the time. And we are both evolving. <laughs> We're both changing. We're both informing one another. Um, so what energies I'm putting into the field is my responsibility as a human being. What contributions am I giving to the field? And also, because that will form the bigger field itself as our you know, collective consciousness. If I can be responsible for my own field, I'm already looking after the bigger field. Mm. Um, but if the field itself is contaminated with negative thoughts, majority of the population, if that's the case, it is influencing me. It's a very interfaceable system, you see. The thing I, <coughs> I'm not sure what I'm gonna believe <coughs> but the thing I like with your way of seeing it and uh, a lot of other people because I meet a lot of people and, and uh, uh, it's it's a lot of people who are thinking the same way as you but the thing I really love about it is it's not some rule books you have to believe it. it's about being in balance with yourself and and uh, and the universe and it's uh, it's about learning new things giving good and ener good energy out for the people around you it's not uh, you shall not have other gods and me you should not it's not because uh, if you go to the bible it's like a book of rules and ways you should think about thing the way you should do thing And uh, I don't believe in that system. I think it, that's uh, I think that's a corrupt system. But the system you are living by is quite open, and it's based on your own nature and goodness. At the same time, I've also I was very much influenced by the beautiful teachings of Jesus too. Yeah, you know. It's there's a lot of goodness there. All all religions have pretty much good points on how to live. Those ways of living that they have suggested are quite good. Yep. You know, don't, they have formed the basis of our ethics. Um, don't kill, don't steal, don't lie. They, these are not bad suggestions. Yeah, but they have like uh, suggestions in the suggestions. So 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 don't kill if 
they not believe something else because then you can kill for the greater good mm. and so so it's open up when i open this book i can i can um, present it in my way and then i can kill in god's name yeah. or do something in god I, i can treat you badly because you you believe in something and and i think that's like the red thread through most of the religions it's uh And 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 I don't understand and say, uh, God forgives everybody. Okay, if he, if he forgives everything, why do we have a hell? Because even what you do this life, he gonna forgive you anyway, and you gonna go straight up to the heaven. So yeah, but I I see it like it's not that God needs to forgive you; it's you who needs to forgive you. Yeah. And if you can do that, God certainly will. Yeah. <laughs> you know. It's uh, it's this this word uh, remorse, our inner judge. When our inner judge is happy with the way we lived, we go to heaven. Yeah. <laughs> and we all actually live in the heaven that that is here. Uh, heaven and hell is here. I believe know? so. It's inside so, me and it's inside you. You know, and if I do uh, proper with the bad choices, I have a hell of a life. Yeah. And uh, and uh, when you go to bed at night, if you have a clear conscience of how your day has been and how you have lived that day mm. that's your hell and heaven there mm. and if if you can live with that god can live with that mm. it's really about we we create our heaven and hell if there is such thing here but yeah that complicating you know, because if if um if i can my content is okay when i go to bed so i can live with it so i can just keep on moving in my life i'm i'm okay But I live in a system who doctrinated me in ways to believe. If I should feel something, if you hurt yourself, but my system I live in says even if you lose a leg here now, I should care nothing about you because you're not the same as me and my system. Then I go to bed and I sleep good because the rules of the Norwegian government or whatever, the law book says that's okay. So then it's okay for me. It's quite complicated. <laughs> Because there's a lot of bad people. I'm sure Putin probably sleeps okay. I don't think he had bad contests. I, I don't know the guy, but something inside me tells me he think he is doing the right thing because he's brought up in this KGB system and whatever. So in his mind, this is just correct. Yeah. But we talked about the shared essence that we all have, certain things that we all have, the the fa- um, shared good essences that we each have as a human being. Uh, Putin must have those. Putin and uh, and away. it we need one needs to be Putin to understand how Putin goes to bed at night. We cannot predict that. One needs to live the life of Putin to understand what Putin is like. Mm. I can only look at it and give my opinion from my perspectives. Um, until I live like Putin and I am Putin, I cannot understand Putin. I, I can judge him. Um, But I, I don't think he was born like this. I think he was in a system uh, more or less uh, shaped him to have his belief system now. Because I think if If he, if, um, if he was born in your home now as a baby and grown up with you, I think he had yeah, probably had problem to lived. sleep after. So But you so see, even someone like Putin in this conversation, for example, if it is, if Putin becomes a topic in our conversation and we see him from our own perspective, Putin is still serving a purpose. By criticizing and seeing the wrongness of his on his actions, we are able to see what is better. Yeah. So Putin serves a purpose for those who see it. Uh, Putin serves his own purpose mm. from his perspective, but nothing is merely bad or good, and that is the hard one to crack. Everything has a purpose. That's all. Yeah, but It's the purpose. How long is the human race? going to use to learning we have Mao we have uh, we have Bush who had some wars we have uh, Adolf Hitler we have Joseph Stalin 
uh, we have Napoleon, we have Alexander the Great. The history just repeats itself, repeat, repeat, and we never fucking I learn w- from it. I and I get frustrated. Why. I wonder why yeah. history repeats. Because it, this is not the first time. I wonder why it must repeat then. We've still not understood it then. Hmm. If we have a new Hitler coming on the way, we still haven't understood. So until we understand, until until we stop the inner battles, external will continue to be in a state of war, no? It's the collective consciousness that is causing. Do, do you think it's just Putin doing this? No, 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 no. We no, are we, no. we are part of it. For sure, for we sure. We are and it's this idea of the war doesn't happen in my country, I'm safe. That's the very reason the war will not stop. And until Yeah, because uh, I heard know, one guy said uh if you look at your government and you think Alexander the Great was, or Napoleon was the last one of the breed, you're in big trouble. Mm. Because it's somebody in your government now, if you're Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Germany, Russia, it's so it's always born a new person who could have a really bad purpose or and uh, and but because we are so blue eyed and so no, 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 not not our system. We are better than that. Soon as we say we are better than that, we are in deep trouble, I think. We, ha- we have to understand the devil lives in us all. Yeah. And and, uh, and the day we respect, it's devil inside you, it's the devil inside me, it's the devil inside people in the government now, then we can maybe prevent it. Because why is this happen again and again and again because we're not integrating the devil into the whole yeah. we are excluding it yeah. so it wants to fight for for its power yeah. it's it's the same as fighting for good as you were saying people used to fight for religions is that different than putin or hitler so the war is war mm-hmm. <laughs> peace is peace mm. you know peace doesn't have to prove war does mm. So, you see, uh, uh, in the Second World War, to uh, Stalin had like a um, order. So, if you retreat, he had his own officers shooting his own people. Yeah. So, so if you don't go inside the battle, they shoot you if you come back. But I saw a documentary yesterday about the First World War too. The people from England did the same thing. They had officers down in the uh, the shooting graves and shooting their own people. If they're turning back, so but the history we hear is about okay. We can hear the Stalin guy, but they had the same. Must be an army technique, some some army rule. It's a your, your soldiers must not give up on you. Yeah, you know. But it's, uh, it's you can't change opinion. No, but it's just repeating himself. So if if you now now we just do it in a softer way. So if you don't want to fight for your country, we put you in jail. We take away your earnings, your uh, ability to take care of your kids. So if you don't follow the system, we're going to put you inside. If you don't follow the system, we're going to take away your kids. If you don't follow the system, we're going to take away your money. We're going to freeze your background. It's the same thing, just repeating itself. Hopefully we won't go back to those times. But um, there will be other forms where that what you just said will show itself. It doesn't always come in that form. Form uh, just change, yeah. Form changes, but the basics are there. The potentials are there. It just depends on how we are individually influencing the system as much as system is influencing us. If we can talk to one another for a common goal, that, that would be great. But if one suggests that right is the best, yeah. things start it things start it's about integration never isolation <laughs> it's yeah. integration of the two it's the blend of the two i don't defy darkness at all i don't defy light at all if i can let them dance as okay. they do yeah. in nature then th- it becomes a harmonious mm. we try not to choose one or the other we try to mm. integrate and welcome both mm. into a harmonious conversation yeah, that works for both somehow you yeah, know the communication and, and uh, conversation you talk about and that's an interesting fact because it's uh, like a human way 
that's the last resort me and you talk. So if you say uh, First World War, War, you know, eight million uh, soldiers died uh, or with the civilian, then they sit down and talk. Yeah, you know, uh, Vietnam War, how many people die? Then they sit down and talk. Same, it's just repeating, repeating. And why not start with that talk? Yeah, in human history, wars have been the main catalyst for revolution, actually, economically, socially. In that way, the philosopher of yoga, his name is Osho, Osho suggested without war, we would never have developed. War is the basis of life, Hmm. meaning the chaos. The chaos is the basis of life because without that, you know, there is no progression. I mean, look at economically how far we've come since those war times and technologically and things. There is something that is needed, which is represented by (laughs) chaos. You know, order and chaos, they also dance together. You know, order and chaos. If there was always order, it's so boring. If there was always, you know, chaos, there is no creation. So dancing the two again, we need chaos as much as we need order. (laughs) <laughs> that's, that's that's not good listening. <laughs> it's a hard one to crack. But yeah. chaos, if you look at the cosmos, it's nothing but chaos. Mm. Uh, then we built here order. Mm. But without the chaos, we wouldn't be here. So going back to our emotions and thoughts, let there be chaos sometimes to shake up the roots, to take you into the new reality and don't think it is the end. Maybe it's preparing you for a something new believe in the birth of the new and how does the birth happen it's very painful Mm. the physiological birth you want to (laughs) die but only then the life happens so those moments of deep pressure might be signaling something really nice and new for you and i hope i hope this idea can help for those who are under tremendous pressure Um, in the end, there, for me and for the listener, is it a um, couple of things you think we should bring along or start thinking or doing to to try to improve our own feelings and life? You go first. Oh. No, for for me at least, I think uh, it's um, sometimes I do it and sometimes I don't do it. I don't know why I don't do it, but to make a manifest in the morning and uh, just sit with a book and write down what I appreciate, what I'm thankful for, mm-hmm. and my goals. Great idea. Yeah, and gratitude uh, diaries. Yeah, mm. because it's so much to be. I have one. Mm. I have one. I started putting one thing per day. At, at least I can do one thing I said. Okay, life might not be great, but one thing I can be great. Gosh, the list got bigger and bigger. Let's yeah. start with one. Start with one, yeah. And then it goes three, five, seventeen. Gosh. Yeah. You start to be grateful for everything then. And That's gratitude crazy. really is. And then it gives you more of what you are grateful of. That's what energy understands. Oh, you are thinking of that? I'll give you more of that. Hmm. Um yeah, fantastic idea. Is there other things you think about? It's okay. Uh, one one thing that has been really helpful for me is this thing, this sort of you know quotation: "This too shall pass." I love that. Sure this too yeah. shall pass, and um, when things are going great, know that this too shall pass. When things are going bad, know that this too shall pass. Nothing stays the same. So believing in the change of life, believing that change is necessary. Change don't necessarily have to be bad. Change is the fact of life. We can reject it all we want. But changes, I think accepting that is a great start. Without change, there is no life. Without growth, there is no life. So this, this too shall pass. You know, whatever it is, this too shall pass. And then we don't get so clingy on things. We don't get so surprised by things because things change. 
and riding the waves of change, you become a surfer. Oh, this too shall pass. I go on to the next wave. Oh, what is that? And to have a level of trust that energy is never against you. It is not judgmental. It gives you what you want more of. So watch your thoughts and feelings, please. Please be aware what is dominating your field of thoughts every day. Because if you're not aware, if you don't have time for yourself and you don't know what is going on inside, those thoughts and ideas start to run the show. Yeah. And you don't want that. And no matter how good or bad, you don't want that. It's, it's not realistic. So please just take a moment, five minutes a day minimum, just how am I feeling today? If I was to give it a color, what would that be? If I was to give it a name, what would that be? If I was to give it an image, what would that be? How much weight does it have? Is it solid? Is it fluid? Is it sticky? Can we please articulate these things? <laughs> and then we start talking about emotions. Uh, we can describe them, you know? We can describe how we feel. Then next time they come, we are familiar with it. And what happened at that time when I felt that this experience happened? I can relate to that. Okay, I, I can connect that emotion to that experience. So I start to form connections. Then I start to realize I create my own reality through my emotions. Um, before going that far, just give them a name and a color and see how they impact you. If it is anger, what are you going to color it? Different for everyone. And um, sleep well. Sleep is so important in the mental energy. That melatonin is more than just rest. It's a hormonal balance point. Sleep well, please. Go to bed if you can early. Don't stay up all night. That doesn't help our psyche at all. Eat well. Surround yourself with beautiful things like you say, art, nature, flowers, people. Um, look after your body because body is the vehicle you live this life through. If the machine is not strong, you're not going to be strong mentally. Don't watch TV too much. Don't watch so much of that. It's, uh, it contaminates the field most of the time unless you're watching documentaries. Um, please research and read a little. Uh, if we can, <laughs> you know, if we can just dedicate some time to understand how an apple grows on a tree. <laughs> if we can just start questioning that. Basic. Oh my we would have no time to be depressed anymore. There's so much to learn. There's so much to learn, yet we know nothing at the end of it. Uh, can we please show some interest in learning instead of being given a fast injection through some TV program or a news? Can we research? Can we learn physics again? We don't have to be in school. Can we learn physics? Uh, can we learn you know, biology? <laughs> to understand how this universe works instead of getting bogged down in our depressions and emotions and daily stories. They're so boring. They get us nowhere. <laughs> but learning how an apple grows does to understand ourselves, you know, there's no difference at the end of the day, you know. Um, and before rejecting new ideas and thoughts, can we please look into it first? And if we can come up with an antithesis and write a research on it, I will respect that. But until that happens, can we please not reject what is the recent science, what it is telling us about emotions and thoughts? Um, yeah, I think that's enough. <laughs> it's a good start. Yeah. Thank you for your time. I really appreciate it.